The team says that a prolonged heat wave in the Siberian Arctic this year is unequivocal evidence of climate change. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The report says failure to act soon will lead to a steady stream of catastrophes. It's moving at breakneck speeds firefighters rarely see. Nowhere has climate change become more evident than the Arctic. Over the last three decades, it has been warming at twice the global rate. Scenes like this from San Francisco's airport tell you all you need to know about the state of the airline business. The world is experiencing a crisis on top of a crisis. With global warming negatively affecting the climate, resulting in accelerating polar ice cap melting, adverse weather phenomena, and ocean temperature rise, as well as a global pandemic, infecting millions, gridlocking the economies of several nations, and leaving people stuck at home. The latter factors in turn severely damaged the aviation industry. This April saw the lowest passenger demand, being as low as 94.3% compared to April of 2019, essentially grounding global commercial air travel. But when most governments came to the decision to lock down countries around March, in July, the world saw one of the largest decrease in global CO2 emissions of 1,551 megatons of CO2. While the largest decrease of 40% of the total was observed in the ground transportation sector, the aviation sector, both domestic and international, saw a 13% reduction of the total. This shows that the aviation industry has a significant impact on the global CO2 emissions during normal times. With many aircraft grounded and some even being permanently retired, such as the Boeing 757s, 767s, MD-88s, Airbus A340-600s and Airbus A380s, moves to develop more efficient and sustainable platforms and modes of propulsion must be made. These advancements would support the Paris Agreement, which aims to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change by keeping a global temperature rise this century well below 2 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial levels, and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. An example of the aviation industry's contribution to the Paris Agreement would be recent developments from Airbus. They have released free zero-emission hybrid hydrogen aircraft concepts, and they aim to produce the first zero-emission aircraft by 2035. Our team Soeco have also set out to develop a concept sustainable propulsion aircraft with our ideas and visions for the future of the aviation industry. Team Soeco meaning sustainability, and eco, or eco-friendly, consists of Yi Yongteo, Yi Li Zhang, Tang Ming Chang, and Arnest Cessna, all student aerospace engineers. From the moment of signing up the team for the competition, we held weekly meetings to review our progress and to conduct any required work. Tracking our workload was done through the project planning program and 3D experience, we have also set up a Microsoft team for general communications as well as a 3D space for 3D model sharing. Our initial online meetings were to meet and greet as not everyone was familiarized with each other. Later meetings included discussions about the competition, our thoughts about the future of aviation, and the direction our team should take regarding the submission. We came to the agreement that we would base our concept on retrofitting an existing aircraft with a sustainable fuel and propulsion system, as we could then compare the performance of the original aircraft with our calculated solution and see if it would be feasible. We also aimed for minimizing the modifications required if existing components would be replaced with our solution. This is fairly similar to the Airbus EFAN X aircraft, which had one of its jet engines replaced with an electric one. Unfortunately, this project was cancelled due to COVID-19. Firstly, our team had to choose an aircraft to retrofit. We considered various planes, from small two-seaters, to business jets, to large commercial airliners. The Airbus A320-200 with CFM-56 engines was selected for our project, as it is one of the best-selling commercial aircraft in the world and that we had access to a fair amount of information regarding various technical details of the plane's performance and dimensions. Secondly, our team had to consider three main fuel and propulsion system concepts. Burning fuel within a turbine to create thrust, 
just like traditional commercial aircraft, using electrical power to run an electric motor and fan to produce thrust, and a hybrid solution of the two. Alongside that, we had to find more information about various sustainable fuels, modes of propulsion, battery technology, etc., which would potentially replace the original fuel system in the A320-200. After some research, our team came to the conclusion that hydrogen would be the fuel used in future aircraft, as hydrogen production could be sustainable, burning it with oxygen produced only energy and water, and it has been demonstrated that it could greatly enhance the performance and reduce cost of the aircraft. Most of today's hydrogen, about 95% is produced by steam, reforming of natural gas, as it is the least expensive method. Although it has a downside of producing vast amount carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, contributing to global warming. For a more sustainable and cleaner future, we believe hydrogen production should move to and further develop methods such as electrolysis of water, which is a process that uses electricity to decompose water into oxygen and hydrogen gases. Power for this method of production could be supplied by renewable energy sources, making the whole process sustainable and eco-friendly. Major changes in this industry would have been made in order to reach hydrogen production level similar to or higher than current day kerosene production. Considering air travel is expected to grow in the future, even with the effect of the current pandemic. Also, if hydrogen is to be used in the aviation sector, changes in the infrastructure and procedure would have to be implemented in terms of hydrogen storage facilities as well as appropriate training for the material handling, especially liquid hydrogen. We made an assumption that in the future, hydrogen would be the main fuel for aviation sector, hence, we consider it for our concept design. Electric vehicles has been rising in popularity in the past decade as improvements in battery technology pathway for more green modes of transportation. In terms of purely electric propulsion for aircraft, lightweight, sufficient and dense energy storage will be paramount for the design of such concept. This is why our team has looked into lithium sulfur batteries. These are still under development but are expected to reach several times the practical energy density with about 550 watt hour per kilogram compared to current day batteries of about 250 watt hour per kilogram as seen in the table. The biggest challenge for creating an electric aircraft is the weight consideration of the battery. Current aircraft burn through the fuel during the flight to its destination, hence reducing its landing weight to acceptable levels. On the other hand, a fully electric aircraft would have the same landing weight as its takeoff weight, raising safety issue with the landing procedure. For example, if you try to power a Boeing 747 by using batteries from a Tesla Model S, the battery pack required would weigh as much as 25 fully loaded 747s. Thus, we believe that in the future, we will see improvements within this technology as much dense battery would allow for fully electric airliners to be feasible. Since we are considering hydrogen as a fuel, one other way of extracting the energy from it would be through a fuel cell. It converts the chemical energy within the hydrogen into electricity and produces water and heat as byproduct. The main advantage of this technology is that it can reach up to 60% efficiency compared to about 35% of hydrogen combustions. The general structure of a fuel cell consists of an electrolyte sitting between two electrons, as well as an anode and a cathode. Distribution of the gases are aided by pipular plates on either side of the cell. Hydrogen passed through channel to anode and catalyst make the hydrogen molecules to split into protons and electrons. In terms of a polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell, a membrane is present within the fuel cell, stick 
which only allow protons to pass through it. The separate electron continues through an external circuit until it reaches a cathode, which is essentially the generated electricity that can be utilized to power a motor or other electrical system. There are various types of fuel cells as seen in this table. The power output ranging from 1 kW to 3 MW. Our first selection was a solid oxidized fuel cell for its great range of output and high efficiency. However, for it to operate, it required to reach a temperature about 1000 Celsius degree, leading to an issue with cooling and breakdown of cell components. We selected the aforementioned polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell as a candidate for our concept design, as well as the power output range from 1 kW to 100 kW. Its operating temperature is more reasonable, about 120 degrees, and can provide quick startup and low following. It has also been demonstrated that it's possible to produce lightweight, high power density PEM fuel cell, which will suit the weight constraint of aircraft design. With the vast majority of today's airliners being powered by high bypass ratio, kerosene burning engines with fans driven by turbines within the engine core, just like the CFM56 on the Airbus A320, vast amounts of pollutants are being ejected into the Earth's atmosphere during each flight. Changes to more eco-friendly solutions, such as electric motors, should be addressed. However, conventional electric motors produce a specific power output of up to 0.5 kilowatt hours per kilogram, much lower than the 3 to 8 kilowatt per kilogram range observed in turbine engine cores. Our team found that developments in high temperature superconducting machines could potentially match the performance of current day turbines, allowing for future aircraft propulsion to be based on electric power. A high temperature superconductor motor would work similarly to conventional electric motors, although either the stator magnets, the rotor magnets, or both are changed with high temperature superconductors, meaning that when cooled, the material gains superconductive properties at higher, but still cryogenic, temperatures. As an example, yttrium barium copper oxide, or YBCO, a common material used in HTS motor production, can achieve superconductivity at about 92 Kelvin, or negative 181 degrees Celsius. This allows for high current density with no resistance, reducing the weight of the machine with potentially being three times lighter than conventional turbine engines. Our hope is that further developments on this topic would enable electric propulsion airliners in the future, as today HTS machines are not practical for aviation applications. Through our research, we have concluded that the hybrid solution would be the best choice for our concept design of retrofitting an A320-200. The kerosene fuel system would be replaced with liquid hydrogen system stored at cryogenic temperatures. The CFM56 turbine engines would be replaced with similarly powered HTS electric motors, which would have the superconductors cool down to operating temperatures by the stored liquid hydrogen. The same hydrogen would then be used to generate electricity through the help of PEM fuel cells that would top up the lithium sulfur battery as well as power the motor and any other electrical system. For high power operations, such as takeoff, both battery and fuel cells would power the motors. While at cruise, which requires less power, the fuel cell produced energy would be sufficient enough to power the motor, while also topping up the battery. After removing 18 tons of kerosene fuel from the A320 aircraft, we replaced them with the cryogenic hydrogen system, PM fuel cell and lithium sulfur batteries maintaining the original maximum weight of the aircraft in order to minimize modification of the original aircraft as we mentioned previously to match the power of the superconductive engine which we assume to produce the same amount of power as the original CFM56 engine. The hydrogen fuel cells and battery need to provide sufficient power especially during the takeoff and climb phase as that requires most power. From a range of calculation, the cryogenic hydrogen system costs us 6 tons, which includes 900 kg of liquid hydrogen. Besides, we also have 5 tons of battery and 6 tons of PEM fuel cells. With all this, it provides enough energy to fly for 4 hours. With 1 hour reserved for emergency, 
it leaves us with 3 hours flight time or about 3500 km range. This flight time and range is best suitable for short range flights as kerosene powered aircraft are usually not economical for short haul flights.